have a system. Uh, listen to Alexa, but uh, before we get to Alexa, if you don't have a legal attorney on your team, then Justin is the man for you. Justin, are you uh, are you on the line right now? I am. Thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate that. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned the um, mail systems and the email blast. I use a very popular free, predominantly free email system, and I get the email sent to myself every week. And at least 50% of the time, the email that is coming from me ends up in my own spam. So having a good, good system for working a CRM will be amazing because, you know, how it's even uh, filtering out emails with my name on it makes no sense. When I'm not, when I'm not sending out weekly email blasts, I am Justin Napola, a real estate attorney with Napola Yanta Attorneys at Law. We have offices in Hollywood and Stewart, but we proudly service the entire state of Florida. We do title, contracts, closing, leasing, all that fun stuff. Anything you can need, we are happy to help you with. Um, I've been an attorney for over 25 years, and I am proud to say I was recently honored by South Florida Business and Wealth Magazine as one of their top real estate attorney honorees. So we're very proud of that. I also have the pleasure of knowing Alexa. So as soon as I saw she was teaching this class, I immediately said, I have to sponsor it because we co-host the Tower Club Real Estate Lunch together, and I have to support my co-host. If there's anything I can, oh, go ahead. Did you say? No, I was just gonna say it. But I, it was so. It was such a pleasant surprise to see you here. I'm like, oh, Justin. So <laughs> Justin's awesome, you guys. He he really is. So I didn't mean to interrupt. I just got. No, really no, no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm eating into your time, so it's fine. I will put my contact information in the chat. And if there's anything you need, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. Justin Napola, Napola Yanta, Attorneys at Law. Thank you so much. Thank you, Justin. Hang on the line for just one more second. Um, I have I have a few questions. Is there any sort of legal issues that you seeing pop up recently that you feel like it would be important to uh, notify your fellow realtors about right now? Yes, the um, eviction and foreclosure moratorium ends basically next week. At the end of this month, it will end. Um, there are no signs that they are going to extend it again for another month. So. There could be a flood of foreclosures coming um, that may kind of loosen up the inventory. I don't know. Nobody seems to know just yet, but it's going to affect real estate quite a bit. Um, the government has put in a lot of uh, safeguards for the homeowner. They, the lenders have to work with them this time before they actually do the foreclosure. They have to try to um, do more to mo mortgage modifications, but we're going to see a lot of action, I think, come but in two weeks. So it, it's something definitely to keep your eye out for. And can you help in any way uh, when it comes to evictions? With evictions? Well, yes, I can. If you are a landlord and you need somebody evicted, you can contact me. I'm happy to help you with that. If you are working with a tenant that is being evicted, you can contact me. I am happy to try to help. But if you are about to be evicted, especially for non-payment, um, after almost what 18 months of of this uh, moratorium it's going to be very difficult to stay that eviction so uh, i but i will i will try to help you however i can absolutely and if you need justin's help he's putting his info in the chat right now well, and then i'll absolutely. also include his email when we send the recording out justin man um you're welcome to stay obviously you're good friends with alexa if you have any expertise that you'd like to share throughout the class please chime in i understand you're a busy man if you got to go Thank you so much for your time, your expertise. And um, if there's anything we can do for you in the future with YPN, please let us know. Appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank you. All um, right. It looks like we actually already have a hand raised. And I believe that's probably a question from Anita for Justin. So if you want to real quick take that and then we can dive on into systems. Thank so. you. Hi, Justin. Hi, Anita. Hey, how are you? Um, Great, thank I, you. Do you work with Wendy from South Florida Title? Um, I do know Wendy. I've known her for years. Um, I think you used to be with her team, right? I, I was never with her team. No. Um, I worked for her underwriter for a while. I, oh. I was with an underwriter for a long time with a couple of underwriters. Um, um quick question since mm -hmm. you have been, uh, in the underwriting area, sure. um, do you feel you negotiate with, uh, collection firms? 
do I negotiate with collection firm? That's not something I uh, do a lot of. Um, it, if you've got a specific issue, you can reach out to me um, offline and we can discuss it and see if there's something. If I can't help you, I definitely know attorneys who can. Okay, great. Great. So yeah, if you put your number up or I can give you my number and then we can. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Anita. The magic YPN is already working. I love it. All right. Alexa, magical person as well. Um, I met her, gosh, back in 2016. She was on the uh, the Broward Miami YPN Leadership Board. Um, and then, of course, I followed her afterwards. Um, she, uh, I'm sorry if I say the title wrong, the Empire Builders Club correct? Did I, mean, I say it wrong? It was Millennial Empire Builders, yep. And then is it, is it, so was, so what is it now? It's, it's evolved. It's a whole, a whole different animal now. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah. Alexa it really needs no introduction. She's, she's pretty involved throughout a uh, majority of Broward County and even Miami-Dade. Um, super intelligent, obviously has strung together a huge system that is not benef not only benefiting her business, but she's willing to share it with you today. So with no further ado, if you're looking to take over the real estate market, Alexa's tools might be able to help you out. Alexa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for presenting today. Yay, thank you guys. All right, so let me just go ahead and share my screen real quick. Friends who hate systems. Um, a lot of times I think when we think of the word system, we're like, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. There's so much that goes into it. And in reality, system, we already have systems in our business. It's just a lot of times they're either not efficient or they're not replicatable so we what we end up doing is we put ourselves in a in a place in our business where nobody else can ever do what we do because we don't even do the same things over and over and over again so let me um move right on just a quick little introduction i'm not trying to make this all about myself but i've been selling real estate since 2013. Um, i work out of fort lauderdale and serve a lot of clients in miami um, and I found myself resenting my business where I was working like ridiculous amounts of hours and really just not enjoying the business over again. And like some of you guys, um, I found myself saying the same things over and over and over again. And I'm like, this is not why I got into this business. I didn't get into this business to be a slave to, to the business. I got into it for for some form of freedom. And a big part of that came with systems. So pre COVID, I started dating my boyfriend and he has a company that outsources personal trainers to people's door. And as he's going through his business, I'm like, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do this? Why don't you use a calendar booking software? And little by little, I started to realize that I almost transformed his business and his systems into the same systems that I have. And he is someone who is not tech savvy. He doesn't like technology at all. And we were able to systemize his business. And he, he started going, you know, you really need to start teaching people this because this is your gift. And I'm like, it's not really that big of a deal. And then I started talking to other agents and they started asking about my systems. And I'm like, okay, there's a demand for, for this type of training. And so um, a lot of you guys have mentioned like CRMs and these one-off tools that don't talk to each other. And I think the biggest um, takeaway that I hope that you have today is that systems are not just the tool. Systems are the process and the tool is what we use to execute the process. So my goal for you today is to show you that you don't need to be tech savvy. You don't need to invest a ton of time or money to implement systems into your business that will help you sell more houses and get your time back. And this is a workshop I've done for like 10 different offices and it's been a lot of fun and I love hearing the takeaways at the end. So once we get further to the end, just keep it, keep kind of this as we go through in mind, because I am going to ask you guys what your takeaways are. And that is really where I think a lot of the masterminding comes from. So first, before we get into the actual systems, we got to like get some clarity on what the mindset shifts that we need to go through are to become a systematic real estate agent. So the first thing is, and this is, I want you guys to put this in the chat. If I tell you not to visualize a dog, what do you visualize? You guys can just go ahead and tell me in the chat. What do you guys visualize? Tell me in the chat. A dog. Yep. Anybody else? Yep. Yep. Right. So 
When we say don't visualize a dog, I just want you guys to keep that in mind. Now, if you went to your doctor's office and your doctor said, listen, we have great service. Well, like, and they, they kind of say in sort of a sketchy way, does that make you feel less or more comfortable? You can put that in the chat. Does it make you feel less or more comfortable when your doctor's like, we, we have great service? Does that make you feel less or more comfortable? Less, less, okay. I'm glad that you guys feel that way because here's the thing. Great service is not a differentiator in our business. It's what they expect. Like you, we don't get to be different and we don't get to use that as our differentiator because that is the bottom line standard that our clients expect to be taken care of. So saying like, oh, well, I answer my phone. That is, that's not something to be, to, like that should not be something that is like, a badge of honor that should be the standard of our industry so by trying to make that the make that the differentiator you're not really any different than other agents in our marketplace now moving on to the next one is most people think that they need more leads to reach their goals but without systems first all of those leads will sort of be like trying to fill like a strainer or a colander it's not going to work because we need to have systems in place to nurture and convert those leads before we have more leads or more social media. Moving on to the next one, my wheel is spinning, so you're gonna have to give it a second, is the person who works the hardest is the person who makes the most money, or do they? Right, like sometimes we know this, but a lot of times we get hung up in the, I gotta work more hours, I gotta work more hours, I gotta be there for my clients every single second of the day. When in reality is if you don't have systems, you don't have a business, you have a hustle. And there is a differentiation there because a hustle is something you just do kind of, you fly by the seat of your pants. A business is something that you can, you can sell, you can scale, and you have replicatable, duplicatable systems. Now, the next one is being busy means that you're making things happen and being productive, right? Please say no in the group chat. Everybody say no. Say no for me, thank you. Okay, thank you, Rosa. The importance of this is so, so dire, okay? Like a lot of times we're like, oh my God, I, I'm sitting still for five minutes. I feel like I need to be doing something. So we go do something rather than being strategic about what we should be doing. So the next one, or it's number four is, if you, if you have to do it more than once, it must be a system. That is a non-negotiable. If you have to do it more than once, if you have to say it more than once, it needs to be a system. Moving on to number five is the purpose of business is to work really, 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 really hard to show social media how hard you work and to always be struggling, right? Say no again. Everybody say no in the group chat. Justin, troublemaker you. Say no in the group chat. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So number five is the purpose of business to fund the perfect life, not to be a slave to your business. So this is where we get into the actual system. And this is, I don't know if it's going to let me play because if I try to go into full screen, it keeps freezing. So this is a, it's a little gif from, um, from the home edit and where they go, it's a system because it is. So I want you guys to jump in here, true or false, 95% of transactions follow the same process every time. Granted, there may be like a different association or they, there may be some nuance that's different, but for the most part, we use the same contract. There's the same generally inspection period. Most of the process is the same, true or false. You can put that in the chat. Yes, for the most part. Awesome, okay. So with that in mind, what we're looking at here is being proactive rather than reactive. So we and our, us and our clients before implementing systems start looking at this as if there's something called chronic uniqueness. We think that every situation is different so we can't implement systems. And our clients all think that their situation is so different and so special until when we realize 
we can bucket most situations into a couple of different categories. And so when we realize that, it gives us the ability to be proactive because we can go, I've seen this before, I've dealt with this before, let me build a system around it so I don't have to work so hard to do the same things over and over again. So with that in mind, um, I want you to remember if you keep if you get more leads before you have back end systems, you'll never be able to serve all the clients that come your way without sacrificing your sanity and without having to give up time with your family and the people who actually matter to you. So the first thing I want to do is introduce you introduce to you the transaction flow. So the first point here is to focus on the back end of your business first. We're going to work backwards from the time that you go under contract until closing, and then we'll work backwards into finding those leads. Now, this system gives you the ability to spend less time in the transaction and, mo and more time on the relationship. So by doing this, you create a consistent and referable experience. So with this, the only tools that you actually need are email templates and a pipeline, which in most cases, uh, most CRMs have some form of pipeline and that way you can keep track of everything. So those email templates should happen at every major point of the transaction. As an example, when you do your buyer consultation or you do your listing presentation, afterwards, you should have an email template that says, thanks so much for taking the time to meet with me. Per our meeting, here are the next things that need to happen. And that way, in case you forgot to mention something during the listing appointment or during the buyer consultation, you don't have to worry because it's in the email. And that way, at least they know that the transactional stuff is done. You can give them the checklist. You never have to worry about forgetting anything. Once you start writing offers and you go under contract and you clear inspection and you, you get through the appraisal and all these different steps, you get the clear to close. Email templates will save you so much sanity and it will give you the ability to send the email, give it 15, 20 minutes, let the buyer or seller review the template and call them and say, hey, listen, I just wanted to give you a quick update. We just cleared such and such contingency. Did you have any questions about the email that I just sent you? And in most cases, when you take the time to educate before something happens, um, what you're going to find is that they're like, no, I, that makes total sense, by the way. And they're, you're going to start having genuine conversations rather than just focusing so much on the transaction. Right. So one of my mentors always told me, if you tell them before, it's an explanation. If you tell them after, it's an excuse. And that's what email templates give you the ability to do. Those email templates tell them what's going to happen next so that when that next thing happens, they're not surprised and they feel comfortable, confident, motivated and ready to take on what comes their way simply because you took the time to educate them. Now, this was also another GIF. Um, which basically just had like a, a whole bunch of texts going in. And the reality is most of our conversations were like this on our phones every two seconds of the day. And here's what it comes down to. On average, we spend about 1.1 minutes, so 66 seconds on each email that comes into our inbox. And most people spend about a third of their day in their email inboxes. So we're like, okay, well, one email, this email takes two seconds to respond to, which on average ends up being 66 seconds. But if we're doing that all day, there's something called decision fatigue, which is the more that your brain works, your brain is just like a muscle. So the more, the more decisions that you have to make, the faster that you're going to burn out. And by the end of the day, you're like, your brain feels like scrambled eggs because you've made so many decisions rather than using these email templates to be able to communicate more effectively and give your clients a greater experience because number one, you can be faster. Number two, you don't have to think about what to say because you can just copy and paste. Now, I'm willing to bet that most of your time is spent coordinating meeting and call times or answering questions about transactions. And so that's where I want to introduce to you the appointment flow. And this is where you make it easy for people to work with you and to refer you because you establish social proof before you ever even talk to them. So here is, this is a quick little video that is a, it's a scroll through. I don't want my computer to freeze here. It's a, it's a scrolling page of, I think I can do it here, of my calendar booking page. And since I started using this, it was, it was an absolute game changer because it gave my clients and the people who are potential referral partners 
all of the information they needed to know that I was a great agent and I didn't have to spend my time on the phone with them telling them why I'm a great agent. I can focus on them and I can build those relationships rather than focusing on just like trying to prove that I, I am who I say that I am. And so through this, a lot of people get very weird about using a calendar to get people to book on it. And rightfully so, because the way that most people try to implement this into their business is they'll throw up Calendly or one of these other platforms and they'll be like, yeah, just book a call on my calendar. Well, the reason that that feels like salesy and gross and non-personal is because it is. Instead, when you say, just to save all the back and forth, can you just do me a favor and pick a time that works best for you on my calendar right here? Since I started using this little blurb, I've never had a single person ever have an issue with going to go book on my calendar because nobody likes to do the back and forth. Like we all know what that's like. Does 2 p.m. on Tuesday work for you? No, I have a call. Okay, what about three? No, I'm gonna be in a meeting. What about four o'clock on Wednesday and five o'clock on Thursday? Instead of doing the back and forth, they can just go look at your calendar, pick a time that works best, and you get to work directly off of your calendar. You're not constantly in reactive mode. And here's the fun part. Once they enter that information into your calendar, that can also sync to your CRM so that that contact information is already in there and you never have to worry about forgetting if somebody was actually synced into your CRM. Now, this is a fun part that I want you guys to participate in with me for a second. What is the first brand of potato chips that you think of? Just like right off the top of your head, somebody you can come off mute. What is the first brand that you can think of? Or put it in the chat, that works too. Awesome. Mm. Maureen, what was that? Nice potato chips. Okay, awesome. All right, so, and do me a favor and give me a second brand. What's the next brand of potato chips, Maureen, that you can think of? Burrito. Okay, and give me one more. Keto. Okay, did anybody notice there that there was a, a hesitation? And it was only a second or two, but there was still a hesitation there. Maureen, I'm not picking on you because this is naturally our psychology, right? Almost every single person, once you get to that second, third, sometimes if you're a big potato chip person, it might take four or five, but if you're not someone who eats potato chips every single day, once you get to the second or third one, you're gonna go, uh, and then you'll remember, but there's still some hesitation there. So now I know you're like, why are you sitting here talking about potato chips in the form of systems? Great question, I'm glad you asked. Most people know six to eight realtors. And in fact, I just read an article that talks about there's more realtors in this market than there are houses sold. So that means people know more realtors than they ever have in history. And yet most people will only call the first or second agent that they can think of. And this, by the way, is where transactions go to die and you see your friend or your family member or that person that you knew from five years ago that you handed a card and was like, call me when you need a realtor. And they're like, oh, I just bought a house with somebody else. And then you're like, but I'm an agent. And they're like, oh, sorry, I forgot. It's not that they were intentionally trying to undercut you. 95% of the time, it's because somebody else had mind share and that's why you lost the transaction. So with that in mind, I wanna introduce the marketing rule of seven. Basically what this says is that in order to remember a brand, you need to see it about seven times. So this is where the follow-up flow comes in. Now your singular goal in this follow-up flow is to give them eight touches over eight weeks. Now with that, your goal is to get them to respond. We're not trying to send them paragraphs of text. We're trying to make it feel very authentic, which is generally gonna be two or three sentence emails, a quick text, a quick phone call, but we wanna get them to respond and engage with us. Because in reality, what's gonna happen is that we generate a lot of leads and this follow-up system gives you the ability to effortlessly follow up with them without burning out or forgetting to call people. And so with that in mind, short, quick follow-ups are better because they're more likely to respond. And that's how you kind of pull them further and further and further into your web. Now, this is for the agents who are like, my clients only want me. They only want to talk to me. And here's the reality. If that were the truth, Zillow would not be the conglomerate that it is. Information 
in the consumer's mind is infinitely more important than the agent. They don't want an agent on demand. They want information on demand. So here is where we introduce that connection flow. And here, we, this is really what goes into um, branding yourself as a professional and as an expert so that you never have to worry about missing a lead. And here is where I want you to start thinking about using social media posts or calls to action other than contact me if you need an agent, because that is probably the most common call to action that most agents are using at this time. And this connection flow becomes the foundation for your digital brand. And so this is where landing pages become more important than your website. And for those of you who don't know the difference, a landing page is one page that has a singular goal of getting somebody to opt in, buy, book, do one thing on the whole page, and everything is built around that one goal. A website gives them tons of different options. Now, what's the difference, you ask? Great question. A website, a good website, has a 2% conversion rate. A good landing page has between 50 and 90% conversion rates. That is a huge difference and simply because they didn't burn out on decision fatigue, they didn't get overwhelmed, they knew exactly what they came for and either the answer was yes or no, and then they left the page. And so here, this is where we implement email signatures that are optimized to make them clickable because right now, if you're using an email signature that is just an image, I'm here to tell you that you are wasting some of the most valuable real estate, no pun intended, in your marketing period because that means that your links are not clickable and so when somebody checks out your your email instead of being able to just click on a link and go to your social media or go to your website or go to your your calendar booking page they're just seeing the graphic your optimized social profiles that when somebody lands on your facebook or your instagram or whatever other platform that you use that they know exactly what you do and there's no confusion and then having a bio link that, that drives traffic to, the, to where you want them to go. So with this, this is where this bio link becomes super important. Now, when they click on that link, it's not just about sending them to like your, your broker's property search website, because if you, if you just do that, what I'm here to tell you is that you're, again, you're missing out on the opportunity and the point of social media, because if you only deliver that as your only form of value, you they are more likely than not going to end up going back to zillow and you lost the opportunity so you have to deliver unique value in the form of like we mentioned before delivering them through landing pages or there's a couple of other ways to do it as well that um, we've been playing with um, but this seems to be a pretty um easy way for people to to start implementing this into their businesses even if they're not tech savvy so now let me ask you and you don't need to answer this question i just Think about it for yourself. How many of your posts, how many of the last 10 posts that you've posted about real estate end with contact me if you need an agent? And here's what it comes down to. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. And when all of our posts just say, contact me if you need an agent, you destroy the no because they never really get to know you because you're just constantly like, just call me, just call me. You don't need to know anything about me. Talk to me. It destroys the like because you never develop that relationship and you destroy the trust because you've never added any value other than they have you're you're your own gatekeeper by using that as your only call to action. So with that in mind, we're gonna switch gears and I'm gonna walk you through something called traffic temperature. So here is where we have three different types of audiences. And this this can apply to pretty much every sort of category of, of potential client that you can think of. If, whether you wanna focus on new construction, first time buyers, move up sellers, veterans, relocations, whatever it is, there, this still applies. We have cold traffic, we have warm traffic, and we have hot traffic. When you post things like, contact me if you, if you need an agent, we're only talking to the hot audience because they are agent aware. So when we're thinking about what the needs, and this is just one example of each of these audiences are, um, for someone who's a cold, a cold lead or a cold traffic, 
they only know what their problem is. They haven't even started discovering the solutions yet. And as agents, sometimes we suffer from something called decision, uh, I'm sorry, the curse of knowledge. And this is where we forget what it's like to not know something. So as soon as they mention the problem, we totally skip over the emotional turmoil that they're experiencing and try to go straight to, yeah, just call me if you need an agent. And that's in reality, not what, that's not what's happening these days. So someone who's problem aware, they're going to be like, I'm really tired of maintaining my property. It's gotten too much. It's too much to maintain. It's too expensive. It's too much square footage, too much cleaning, whatever it is. And so they just know what their problem is. And so they're going to go, you know what, maybe we just need to hire a cleaning lady, or maybe we just need to reorganize. Maybe we need to declutter, right? And then we have our warm people where they've gone through all of the other options and now they're starting to explore the concept of selling their property. And so they're like, okay, well, that's a really big commitment. So I want to go through all of the other solutions first. So yes, like that's on the table, but I don't want to rush into it. Right. And we hear that a lot. And then the last one is like, okay, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to choose an agent. And those are the people that we love, except Here's where the problem comes in. Because your hot traffic is already agent aware, if you're not one of those first two names that they think of, it's too late. You're not gonna get the opportunity to even get in front of them because they already have their agents in mind. So instead, I wanna challenge you to start looking at the warm and cold traffic, specifically starting with the warm traffic because most of us skip right over that. And so this is where we start giving them information to help them almost lead them to the water without forcing them to drink it. So we give them the information they need to make a great decision. And because you've added so much value, once they do become hot traffic, you're the person that's top of mind that's going to call them. So here's where in our social media posts, you're like, okay, well, I get all of this and I, I see how that can work, but like, how does that actually go logistically? How do we get that sort of interest to turn into a transaction? And great question. The first thing I want you to think about is that logic makes us think and emotion makes us act. Too often when we're posting on social media, we post just for the sake of posting and there's no emotion that goes into it whatsoever. We never even give a thought to the emotion that we're provoking. And so we're like, okay, well, I'm doing all this content and they say post more, but I'm not seeing the results. And I would challenge you to go look at the, the last 10, maybe 15 posts that you've done and look at what emotion are you trying to trigger? And if you're not triggering any emotion, well, that's why you're not getting any sort of engagement. The way to do this is to prime them with stories because here's the thing. People don't change their minds. They make new, new decisions based on new information. So with knowing the psychology behind this, if you try to tell them the way that you're thinking about this is wrong and here's the right way to think about it, their defenses go up and they no longer are listening. When you lead them through a story, so whether that's a case study or something that you've experienced and you walk them through, what somebody else has been through or you walk them through an example of what you're trying to um what you're trying to show them you're now priming them to go okay maybe i don't know everything to make the best decision and because you allow them to take ownership of changing their own mind you've essentially gotten them to change their mind without forcing it on them so in this situation a lot of times we only post the what like Here's how much money you need to save to buy a house. And that's basically the what. And that removes all of the emotion. Telling them how to do everything just makes them want to do it themselves rather than reaching out to you. If, if you tell them uh, how to do everything, there's no reason for them to talk to you. So instead, I want you to focus on the why. Why is it important to save up for your down payment? And then you can add a little blurb of, here's here's what you need to do or here's how much money you need to have but you never just want to throw out the information and just be like okay we're done because you're never going to get the engagement that you're looking for and then you want to drive that traffic to a, a landing page and there's also another um, project that we've been working on with messenger bots which agents are actually loving right now because it doesn't require any of the tech savvy of landing pages 
to drive traffic, collect information, and also deliver your the pieces of value that make them go, this is the agent that I want to work with. So now that we figured out, like we worked backwards at this point, like we've gone through the transaction flow, we've gone through getting the, the appointment, we've gone through the follow-up, we've gone through how to get the contact information into the uh, into our CRM, into our follow-up plans. Now we're at the place where we're like, okay, now I understand what I need to be doing to post to get the engagement that I'm looking for. But how do I grow my following? How do I get people to like find me? And this is where it comes down, this is what it comes down to. The riches are in the niches. With social media expanding faster every single day, we have to give people the emotion, because remember it goes back to logic makes us think, emotion makes us act. We have to go back to the emotion of where have you been all my life? You are exactly what I've been looking for and you become their new addiction. And the only way to do that is to pick a niche that you want to focus on. And for those of you who are like, wait, but I service everybody. I don't want to, I don't want to like push away anybody who doesn't fall into that category. What I'm here to ask you is if you're not, or I should say here to tell you is if you're not reaching your goals off of social media specifically, it doesn't matter if you try something else because what you're trying right now is not working, right? So like if you're getting all the business that you ever wanted off of social media, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not getting the results that you're looking for, then try the approach of going with a niche that's going to help you find the right people and attract them to you. So uh, moving on from this is I want you to remember that your, your social media is not a classifieds ad. If you only give them stuff they can Google, if you only give them like the front picture of properties and it looks like a newspaper classifieds page, there's no reason for them to follow you. Yes, you may have had one great post, but when they click to your profile and there's nothing else other than the front of houses that they can find on the other agents MLS setup or search setup for them, or they can find on Zillow, they're gonna click away and you're never gonna see them again. So with this, I want you to go back to that know, like, and trust. Let them get to know you and get personal. And by the way, that doesn't mean you have to like share what you ate for lunch. That doesn't mean you have to give away your whole entire family, but you can choose to share the, the elements of your business and the elements of yourself that your ideal client is going to be able to relate with. The like piece is the engaging comment, follow them, like engage with the people on social media. Yes, we're, we're, a screen divides us, but there's still people on the other side of that screen and build the trust by being educational. And when you tell them, I'm gonna send you X, Y, and Z, make sure you send it because if that's what they're gonna get to know you off of. And by picking a niche, you can start to speak the way that your target audience speaks. Because it, think about it this way, the words that, um, a millennial uses and the phrasing that they use is going to be different than someone who is is a baby boomer. Someone who is a parent to a newborn is going to have a very different reality than someone who is a, a grandparent or has a, adult children. Anyway, so Kevin doesn't, doesn't kill me for this. I'm not telling you that you have to talk about their families. What I'm saying is, because we don't, we never want to get into that fair housing thing. What, what we do want to focus on though, is making sure that our language, the language patterns that we use align with, with what your target audience is talking about. And at this point you're like, okay, I get all of this, but like, I don't have enough content ideas. I don't even know where to start in coming up with content. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because I have just the thing for you. So we're going to, I'm not going to make you guys do this, but I want you to think about if we go through a first time buyer, a luxury buyer and an investor, would you guys all agree? You can just say yes in the chat that they're all buyers. All three of these categories are all looking to buy real estate. Can you say yes in the chat, please? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, so with this in mind, I want you to think about what is a question that is that is pretty unique to a first-time buyer that they're going to ask. 
What's something that a first time buyer wants to know that is pretty special to them? You can drop that in the chat as well. Yeah, financing, what else? Can I back out of the contract? What's the first time home buyer loan? How much do I need for a down payment? Right? Like these are, these are, what is an FHA? Perfect. These are all great examples of what a first time buyer is going to ask you. Now I want you to think about like a $3 million buyer, right? Someone who is like, I, I like, that's what I'm looking for. $3 million, six bedrooms on the water. Tell me what questions they're going to ask you. Put that in properties, long-term value. Yep. What else? How big is the dock? Okay. What else? Do you think that they would ask you about private schools? What are the taxes? That's a great one too. They're going to ask you about private schools. They're going to ask you about the lifestyle around the area. And private schools generally, from what I've seen, first time buyers are not, are not always asking about, but almost always luxury clients want to know about private schools. That's a, something that is pretty unique to luxury over a, a first time buyer who's like a $300,000 property, right? Now I want you to think about the investors. What are the questions that an investor is going to ask you that the other two might not ask? Yeah, Justin, return on investment. What else? What else would an investor ask that the other two probably are not going to even think to ask? Yeah, I need a tenant. How soon can I close? They're probably going to ask about like hard money and and how uh, wholesaling and all these other creative ways to buy properties, rental restrictions, right? So you guys just came up with like 10 different different content ideas. And just by being able to say, you know what, let's pick a specific audience, you were able to come up with a lot of content ideas. Sometimes the reason that we struggle so much to find content ideas is because we have no focus. That's the, like, that's the equivalent of telling or me telling you to name everything that you can think of that's, that's white, right? Like you're like, okay, well, my walls are white, maybe, I don't know, the paper around me is white. And then you're going to get, you're going to start to just be like, I can't think of anything else. But if we say, you know what, I want you to think of everything that's green in your refrigerator, you're going to be able to come up with several things. And it's just because we were able to get more creative and be able to give ourselves kind of some freedom within, um, within boundaries. And that's how we are able to come up with more content ideas. So here is where I want you to think about, you don't have to create unique content for every platform, every single second of the day. The best way that I found to do this is to record a video. So taking those questions that we just came up with for the different audiences, answer the question in the form of video. And then you take that video and you, you strip out the, uh, the subtitles and you use that as a long form caption. A lot of people think that people don't read um, the, those long captions, I can, I can tell you otherwise. They, there's people who are, are watchers. There's people who are readers. There's people who are listeners. People's learning styles are different and we want to make sure that we cater to all of them. Then some people prefer the carousel style, which you see a lot on Instagram, or they may just want the one-off little blur. You can take one video and strip out all the wording and turn it into other pieces of content. And then you can use that in Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, a blog, and LinkedIn. And from one video, you can create 17 different types of content. So I know that I just gave you like a lot of information and you're probably, your brain is probably like exploding at this point. And I wanted to kind of give you what this looks like in one big picture. So pretty much what happens here is that I didn't include the, the part about content posting, but let's say the person lands on your profile and they're like, wow, this looks really good. They identify with your bio, the posts look good, your name and your photo align with your brand, everything makes sense. And then they click on that link in your bio and they're like, wow, this is really cool. Maybe they decide to opt into something in your bio or they're like, you know what? I just wanna talk to you. So they book a call in your calendar. Maybe they're ready, maybe they're not. If they're ready, you're like, okay, great. Let's set a consultation and they book the consultation on your calendar again. 
and maybe they're not ready yet. So you put them on your eight by eight follow up. And then at some point when they are ready, then they're ready to book the consultation. You have them complete an intake form and then you send them to either a video or a package that walks them through the process. And by taking them through this process, I want you to think about some people are like, I'm I, like buyers are never going to do that. When you explain to them that when they go to the doctor's office, the doctor has them fill out a form and they ask them questions like, is it a stabbing pain or is it a, like a numb, a numbing dull pain? But this is same exact process. And we have to respect our systems enough to have boundaries around what we will and will not allow in our own businesses. And by giving them this process video or the pre-listing package, you're going to answer most of their questions. So by the time you actually sit down with them and you do the consultation, there's not a question of whether or not they want to work with you. It's a question of what's the game plan for us to get started. And then once you get them through, whether it uh, on the buyer side shopping for properties or on the seller side you get them through the actual like showing preparation that piece of it and you get to the contract that's where the transaction templates come into play and this is how you build a duplicatable systematic business where you can start to leverage yourself out where some things you can have an assistant do or you can have a showing assistant and this is where the power comes from and being able to have leverage so at this point, you're like, okay, I get this, but that's a lot of information and I'm not tech savvy or I don't know how to do this. And so now like your brain is swirling with all the reasons why you can't do this. And so we're going to, we're going to deal with that right now. The first one and most common is I'm not tech savvy. And here's what I have for you. Systems are supposed to make your business easier and not more complicated. The right systems, you're right. They're going to require a little bit of setup. But once you have them set up, you don't have to worry about it again. So is it worth it to you and to your sanity and to your family to take a little bit of time to get to get acquainted with your systems so that you know how your business runs and then to not have to worry about it again, right? Next one is I don't have time. And the answer is you're already running systems in your business. And if you don't have time, it just means that your current systems are broken. They're just not working. So I want you to think of it like a slingshot. Sometimes you have to pull back a little bit before you can spring ahead. The next one is I'm not a systems person. And if you're familiar with the DISC personality profile, you're going to love this one. So if you're the direct and to the point type of person, you're going to love systems because you don't have to repeat yourself. I fall into that category. So a lot of times if you're, if you're familiar with the DISC, my D personalities are like, oh no, I'm not a systems person. I'm not a C. And in reality, if you don't want to repeat yourself 500 million times, you're going to, you're, you're going to start to use systems in your business. For my I personalities, if you're a person, if you're a people person who hates process and hates paperwork, systems eliminate a lot of the transactional stuff so you can focus on the relationship. If you're the S personality or the amiable personality and you're, you consider yourself to be warm, nurturing and caring, Systems give you the ability to have a consistent experience and to be available to your clients. If you're the C personality where you're cautious and accurate, you never have to worry about missing a step because your systems do the heavy lifting for you. Maybe you're like, you know what? I don't want to lose the personal touch in my business. And here's, here's what I want you to think about. Systems do the heavy lifting in your business so that you can focus on the and it will give you the freedom to focus on the personal touch. So rather than, than trying to be so involved in every single step and every single detail, you can focus on the relationship and let your, your business take care of the heavy lifting when it comes to the transactional. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I'm a control freak and I don't want my systems running for me. And the reality is systems allow you to be consistent so you never miss a step. And you can set up your systems in a way where there's approvals that, that come into play so that the wrong emails don't go out. Is it always going to be perfect? No, but you're going to be way better off with them than you would be without them. Maybe you're like, you know what? I'm a new agent and you know, I, don't, I haven't done any transactions. I'm not ready for this yet. And by the way, congratulations on getting into this business. It's amazing. It's crazy sometimes, but it is so rewarding and so worth it. And so as a new agent, that means that you have no bad habits yet. So you get to start out with the good ones. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I'd rather just hire someone to do this for me, which is perfectly fine. 
And here's what I want you to think about. You don't have a true business until you have systems. So you can hire a VA or an admin if you need to, but until you have systems, you're still just a hustler. Additionally, giving your, your team systems makes sure that they know exactly how to make you happy and you never have to worry about being a micromanager in every single situation. Maybe you're like, you know what? This will work for me because my clients want to talk to me and not go to a link. And like I said before, if our clients only wanted us, they would be a lot more loyal. People would never change agents. Zillow would have never become as profitable as they are. People want information on demand and you can make it, you can set up your systems in a way that it's still personal without having to, to sacrifice your sanity. And the next one is maybe you're like, you know what, you're here today, obviously. So this may not apply exactly to you, but for a lot of agents, they're like, I just don't have time for more training. I don't have time to do this. And here's what I want you to think about. You don't, you might not have time for more trainings that don't help you move forward and don't give you tactical implementable strategies. That's perfectly fine. But if you, if you can find the trainings that are going to give you those tactical implementable strategies, that's going to be worth your time. So our objective today was to show you that you don't need to be tech savvy or invest tons of time and money to implement systems into your business that will help you sell more houses and get your time back. If we achieved our goal today, give me a yes in the chat, please. Does anybody have any other questions? If not, you are dismissed. Thank you for having, uh, having a wonderful class with us. Alexa, you are fantastic. And um, I hope we see you more. Absolutely. Um, I just added the coupon code as well. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, feel free to try that again. And I look forward to seeing you guys all there. Have a great one, everybody. Have a great one. I'm posting the email right now. So if you want the contact information, you have it. Um, and we'll have a next, well, our next class next week. See you all then. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, don't you still remain me?